because we have a special presentation of Alex's speech in Dallas, Texas, on his blueprint to defeat the New World Order speaking tour. It's a great speech. I've, I've watched Alex almost every day on air for more than uh, six years, and I think his best moments are still captured during his live speaking events. And uh, so it's great if you can come out to see him. For those who can't, you can watch it on the recording, even though in some ways you don't capture the same energy. Nonetheless, a lot of important points came up, and in the question and answer sa sessions, many interesting stories come forward. People who cured themselves using natural remedies to fight disease, uh, people targeted by Monsanto, people inside the military uh, who are responding to and seeing the responses of others in the military against illegal orders, including the NDAA, and a whole lot more. Uh, so now we bring you that speech, and we hope you also watch the companion documentary that's now out for free, New World Order Blueprint of Mad Men. You can find that on our YouTube channel and at prisonplanet.tv. We appreciate all the subscribers and hope you'll stay tuned. Good night. I know the gentleman that you guys are here for, the Mario Andretti, the Rock, all rolled into one. It's time for Alex Jones. Now look at all these articles and documents and notes I've got. Hell, I gotta do a good job with all you great people out here. You know, like I said earlier, when I uh, introduced that documentary we just showed, I am humbled by meeting you. I'm humbled by, by talking to you. And I know that it's in people like you that we're gonna turn this around. Because, because we don't have a choice. How many times have we been lied to? How many times have we caught the system doing everything it can, not just to rob us, but to try to ruin our lives so that we're weak and poor and dominated by them so they can control our destiny. I don't like that. I want to see humanity doing well. I want to see humanity empowered. You know, my dad's a dentist, and at least once a year for more than 20 years, he's gone to Latin America to be part of these free clinics for these different doctors organizations to take care of kids. And he's told me the same stories that my uncle told me who did years of work as a missionary in Central and South America. And he said, you know, you don't appreciate life, even though my uncle was in Vietnam, a helicopter pilot, until you see children at orphanages where the orphanages don't even have the money to pay for food. And there's little kids with their rib cages sticking out. That's what we're talking about. You have to realize, I have to realize, and really let it burn into our brains that more than 15 million children, according to the UN and their own numbers, it's probably higher, 15 million children a year starve to death on this planet and another 20 million adults. And our corrupt, stinking, corporate fascist government pays farmers not to produce food. And it's not just that they're trying to protect our markets. Then you find out that they've got all these endless white papers, as many as you could ever read. Every day, Aaron Dyke's doing research and others in my crew bring in. This is on the Rockefeller Foundation. This is on the Carnegie Foundation. This is on the Ford Foundation. Here's a Planned Parenthood document. Oh, where is it? It's on you know this university site archive talking about how in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, we got to shut food off to people to kill them. And then some people say, well, there are too many people. I love the yuppies that'll say, well, okay, there is a population control agenda, but there are too many of those people. And I'm like, don't you get it, you little jackass bastard? You, you think you're part of the system? Your water, your food, your vaccines, it's all jacked with the same stuff, you little piece of crap. There is nothing more pathetic than some coward who is so cowardly, they play like a little dress-up game in their mind, a little make-believe game in their mind, that they're part of the winning team because they go along with all this, that it's like some kind of open joke like it's some type of game. 
I've had so-called establishment types. It's always somebody who's worth like $50 million and thinks they're part of the elite when that isn't even middle class or the globalist who'll, who'll come up to me and say, well, Alex, you know, maybe 9-11 is an inside job, but you know, it takes things like that to get the people doing what they're supposed to. Like this sack of garbage thinks they're part of the system because they can understand false flag terror and understand that's what it takes to defend America. No. If they did evil things like that to, to defeat evil, it'd be evil. Because you can't become evil to defeat evil like the ring of Sauron and Lord of the Rings. doesn't work that way. But they're not using evil to defeat evil. They're not even following that fallacy. They have given themselves totally over to it. The globalists compete with each other to see who is the most wicked and ruthless. And in that process have become total madmen as I documented in this earlier presentation that you saw. And that was only the tip of the iceberg. Our problem in compiling that 40 minutes was that there was so much we didn't get to, so much that we couldn't cover, so much that we couldn't show you how much crisis this world is in. Now with that said, I've given you the blueprint of madmen. I want to give you the blueprint to defeat the New World Order. This world's engineers, the controllers of this planet, always seek to teach you that resources are finite. They always seek to teach you that for you to win, somebody else has got to lose. They know full well that's not how this world works, that we have unlimited potential that we're made in the image of the Creator. Whether you believe in that or not, humankind has given us Beethoven, literature. They've given us all of the science, all of the beauty. They've given us people like Whitney Houston's voice. All the things that are in humanity, all the good, and it's by recognizing that good and that potential and by reaching for what's good and empowers us that we have hope for the future. Our ancestors, and God knows they weren't perfect, understood sacrifice and standing up for what's right. And that's the only reason we're here today. Why do you think the United States, such a small area geographically for the land surface of this planet, and only 4.5% of the world's population, 100%, 7 million, the United States is 45 or 4.9, depending on which actuary you look at, but less than 5% of the world's population. Why did the United States, with less than 5% of the world's population, have more than half the wealth of the world? Freedom. freedom. And it doesn't mean that our higher level of freedom was perfect. Doesn't mean that there wasn't injustice. Didn't mean that there weren't problems. But compared to every other place in the world, we didn't have the corrupt elites on top of us trying to shut down human destiny, shut down human ingenuity and creativity because they're threatened by it because they want a monopoly. Because the United States only had a few glimmers and moments of freedom, we developed the highest test scores. We developed the most scientific developments. We created the media and the literature and the art and the music that has conquered the world. And the globalist, the global scientific engineers saw that. They were aware of that. They knew that. And so they did everything they could to take that over and to take our energies and turn it against humanity. So now America is in a paradox. America, right here at this center place where we live, make no mistake, is where the battle will be fought. It's where the decisions will be made. We are the great evil empire but we are also the great deliverer from the tyranny. But we have to decide who we are. That's why the struggle between good and evil is being decided here. Because we have the birthright of liberty, because we have the basic freedom, because we are armed like no other nation on earth, the globalists have not taken this republic. All right, I've never been able to do this on the radio. I can never get to the second point without, without going off into rants. It may be a bad speech, it may be the best ever, but I'm going to attempt, with your help, to go through all these points. All right, 
I'll start at the top. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank my crew, but I also want to thank all of you. I love that Teddy Roosevelt quote. I should have had it here so I could quote it properly, but forget the critic, the person who's not in the arena. What matters is the person who is in the arena, who knows the great challenges, the great struggles. Because even if you fail, at least you, you tried to dare greatly. That's what matters, is trying. That's where it all starts, is taking action. That's what's fulfilling. And I want to say this to you here now, because I was told several times last week and again today that I am the 21st century Paul Revere. And I said, no, you are the 21st century Paul Revere. And this is not a battle. This is not a war against the undefeated British Imperial Redcoats who'd never been defeated. And George Washington lost almost every battle for five years, but they persevered. It was the continuing to fight. It was the resistance that was the victory. And that's why the system attacks that victory, because it hates it. Anything the New World Order attacks, you better believe that's where the, that's where the liberty is. That's where the freedom is. That's what's good. Not because it's perfect, but like King David of the Bible, the heart is right. That's what matters. None of us are perfect. And the system will try to tell us how we're bad and how we're impure and how we're not good. None of that matters. It's our hearts that matter. It's what we stand for. It's who we are in the final equation that matters. Do we serve light or do we serve the murdering, destructive darkness? That's the question that you must decide. And it's a decision you must make. The system tells you there's not that decision because that decision is there, and that decision is where all the power in this universe resides. As Martin Luther King said, the universe bends towards justice. Providence is on the side of justice. The minute, the second you commit yourself to liberty and freedom and justice, even your body be killed, your spirit truly has victory. So I say it to you now, we are all Paul Revere, and we're not just fighting for freedom in North America. This is 1776, worldwide. Our republic's wealth and everything it is and all of its challenges has now been teamed up pulling the globalist system of enslavement and war and death. We are now in bondage to pure evil. Our energies and everything our ancestors built is now slave to this evil. And we must break the chains of slavery. We must break them now. We must declare liberty. Now those are just the notes up here on the top of the page. Because I mean, I'm sitting there writing key points I want to cover and just thinking I'm not worthy to bring you this message. But it doesn't matter because it's a mission we must all carry out. And what matters is that we give 110%. Now I gave you their blueprint for madness and all the crazy stuff these globalists are doing trying to play God and trying to get the super weapon so they can threaten everybody and get their world government. And in the process, probably destroying us all if we don't turn this around. But I, on the first point, want to tell you, we are winning, and I'll get more into it in this speech, but my God, I remember 17 years ago first getting on radio and TV and people, probably half the people saying I was crazy totally crazy for having documents, having facts. I don't hear that now. I hear almost no one disagree with us on the facts because it's all out in the open. The enemy's uncloaked. It's moving in on us a million miles an hour right now. Instead, they say, fine, but you can't do anything about it. So we've gone, we've gone from denying this is going on to, okay, it's going on, but you can't do anything about it. That's right. That's right. 
When the enemy comes in, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. And I hate to preach at you, but that's just what comes out of me as we face this evil. Because the New World Order, they believe, and let me tell you what they believe in. You can give it any name you want, and quite frankly, devil ain't evil enough for it. Now, continuing here, we must develop a blueprint to defeat the New World Order. We are winning. We are having victories because humanity has power. And real men and women who have power, who have love, who have strength, who have courage, we always are ashamed of our power. We're always meek and humble in the face of evil. And we think that it's just our job to lay down to it. I'm here to tell you, it's time for humanity to stand up because evil... Evil is coming down on our children. Evil is coming down on our communities. Evil is coming down on us with all their plagues and all their disease and all their corruption that they gained power out of. And it's time for humanity to stand up in the info war and say, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this, but you want to fight? You better believe you got one. I can't tell you, and I'm going to get to this in a moment, how many people tell me, I can't believe you did this and you did that. Aren't they going to get you? Listen, these enemies are weak. And the minute you don't care if they kill you, they lose all their power. I don't want to die. I love life a lot. I want to stay with my wife and children. But you kill me, you only give this system against you ten times the power. And that's why they haven't killed me yet, because they know it. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. What would make these criminals put poisons in our food and water to try to blind us and fog our vision? Because they're scared of you. The crooks know how humans work. They know the secret of humanity, but they seek to hide it. They seek to block you from ever fully developing. They seek to block you from ever becoming who you really are because they're scared of you. And always remember that. That's the secret. Got another line here, point number three of about 40. Technotronic and technocratic power is built on illusion. It's built on fraud. It's built on lies. And you don't have to listen to what I say or believe what I say. All you got to do is start looking around. Start thinking for yourself. Start investigating things. And you will see it all right there. You do that, you get past your fear, you start reaching out to others. So many people reach out to people. And like, oh, I know this sounds kooky. I know it's bad and crazy, but I think we shouldn't trust the government. I mean, what? A government with over 10,000 plus admitted programs, some programs, tens of thousands apiece, killing foster children, radiating people, shooting people up with syphilis, giving nerve gassing troops. I mean, it just goes on. And I, oh my God, I'm sorry. But I think we might not trust these people. I, they only killed a whole bunch. <laughs> they only had troops over and over again march into radiation after they dropped A-bombs and hydrogen bombs. I, I, you know, they have the troops used depleted uranium, which their own handbook says is going to kill them down the road. I, I, I'm sorry I'm talking bad about these people. I, I apologize. I mean, think of how crazy that is. They just convinced us because it's the system. It's the establishment. And all of us do it. We're all part of the system one way or another. So, you know, well, you've done well now in the system. Now time to go to the next level and join the team and be pragmatic. That's the speech you'll get. And it's a load of bull because the people above you that are inviting you into their new world order, they're slaves. They've sold out to it. They're, they're blind or they're cowards. You don't want to be part of them. Like Patrick Henry said, hey, forget you are our brethren, our brothers. Go from us in peace. Crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you. Let your chains sit lightly upon you. As for me, give me liberty or give me death. You don't think the central bankers, through fraud and just fiat garbage they made up and paid politicians to say was the money, took over and went, I can't believe we took over with this con game. What are we going to do? We got some scientists say start poisoning the water. They'll dumb them down. We can get rid of a bunch of them and they won't wake up to this. This is really a good deal. We got some scientists that say they can make you live forever too. 
well, hell, let's kill all these people. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, th- listen, the Romans did it. Every culture went in and wiped out everybody they conquered. I mean, this, this is just being done high tech to everybody. And they just zombify you. They wipe out your mind. They wipe out your soul. But humanity is so strong. Despite this fog we're walking through, despite everything they've done to us, we're still here. And you know what? It's going to boomerang on them. Because once humanity knows it's under attack, and once humanity knows what's going on, nothing on earth is going to stop us. Nothing. And I'll issue another message to the global controllers and their camp followers and all their servants and all their slaves. We're not just trying to save humanity here. You people are clearly going to destroy yourselves. I covered that earlier. I mean, the genetic engineering, the weapons, the antimatter weapons, all of it, all the crazy stuff you guys are doing, trying to one-up each other. Oh, really? You did that? We just produced something that will kill 99% of people we release it. Oh, that's really great. Oh, you've got underground bunkers to protect you from that. You're going to be down in the bunkers with a bunch of people like you? You vampires, you vampires only exist off of us. Can you imagine some crypt a mile under the ground or under some mountain with all these vampires who've killed us if they succeed living with each other? I don't think they've thought this out. Now we've gotten to point number four now. And I already pretty much covered this three times, so I'll just make it brief. What does waking up mean? What does waking up mean? It means you're no longer in a dream. Like George Carlin, he said, yeah, it's the American dream because you've got to be asleep to believe it. And if you expand on that, what does it mean to be awake? It just means you look into things. It means you don't just automatically buy what you're being told. It means, again, people say, oh, Alex Jones wants people to believe the way he wants. Believe the way I want. I, don't even, I mean, I'm so tuned into what's going on in the world, I can't even handle the stream of information. I'm more like an egg frying on a pan or something. Talk about brain on drugs. Talk about brain on reality. Look. I know why people tune out of reality, because it's hardcore. (laughs) I don't need any drug to take a ride on this machine. And I'm not just talking about the ugly things in the world. Let me tell you something. I watch my young daughters running around playing games or drawing or fighting with each other. I mean, that's entertainment. These are happy, energetic creatures. My son, these are beautiful creatures, just like every other child I see. That's the spirit of humanity. That's what humans are before the world corrupts them. And that's the thing that makes me the sickest, the way this global system seeks to corrupt our youth and turn them against their parents, and the way Madison Avenue, you know, we're winning. But when we really win is we realize status means nothing. How much money you make means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing. What matters is your heart and your soul and what you stand for. That's the value. That's eternal. That's what's good. And that brings us now to the subject of trendies. Now, when I say trendies, what am I talking about? Well, that gets into Edward Bernays and psychological warfare and Madison Avenue and advertisement. But it goes back thousands of years, really to China, but other cultures did it as well. They would get the Chinese royalty to bound their women's feet where they couldn't even walk. And the priest class would tell them because it was stylish. And you've got to be stylish. You're royalty. You don't walk. We feed you. And they said, well, God, if it's trendy, I mean, I'm, I, that was the governmental class, the national security class, taking control of the great grandkids of some Chinese warlord that had taken over the area. But they, they explained, first you wear big fancy outfits and crowns, so you impress everybody. But next, you're so royal, you don't walk. And to make sure you don't walk, we're going to bind your feet where you can't walk so that now the bureaucratic security class we see now taking over TSA, is in control. And you can look at it in Babylon, you can look at it in ancient Egypt. Every culture did this. And you go back 500 years ago, it was illegal all over Europe to wear certain colors or wear certain outfits. Only the gentry could wear that. Only the royalty could wear that. Only the elite could wear that. And so people would kill, steal, 
to wear a certain color cloak. They would kill for that pair of Air Jordans like you've seen in the news. It's the same thing. And that way the system doesn't just make money every year, got to throw out that wardrobe. It's not cool anymore. Now you've got to get into the mindset and the idea. And so what they took with fashion, which bounding people's feet, or in some cultures, putting big boards on people's heads, so like cone heads. I mean, th this was what priest class did. They'd, and the priest class would always sit back and laugh. Oh, we got the royals who used to run us 100 years ago wearing big boards on their heads. They can't even walk. Because <laughs> it's stylish. And, of course, the, you know, the average tribes people, oh, my God, you got a bunch of rings around your neck and a big cone head. Let me bow down to you. Or you can't even walk. Or, you know, you're wearing some big giant queenie outfit in England or whatever. This is the type of stuff that they would do over and over again. So, so many people, they get off on new world order, global government. <laughs> I heard the TV laugh at that. I'm trendy. <laughs> I mean, this is a pathetic victim of style. This is a pathetic victim of trendiness. And again, if you want to have purple hair, if you want to have 18 million tattoos or none or a big cowboy hat, I don't care what you're doing as long as that's what you like because I don't see what you look like or what you're wearing. I see the content of your deeds. The point is the globalists know how to sell you through trendiness. That is one of their main systems of control. I mean, I still have reporters call me up or Nightline show up or MSNBC or Rolling Stone or you name it, and they go, so you're imagining a world government. And I go, well, let me take you to a computer and show you, I don't know, a couple thousand mainstream articles saying world government's being established. And they go, oh, no, uh, we don't want to look at those. Uh, literally, literally, no, Nightline, like MB, ABC Nightly News host looked at me. He said, no, we don't want to look at those. We just want to ask you about why you think it's real. <laughs> and I said, it was like a year ago, and I said, I'm not going to do this interview unless you come and watch this. So I showed him Al Gore, the head of the EU, Herman von Rumpy, British Prime Minister at the time, Gordon Brown, George Bush, world government. I showed him what world government means, corporate fascist state, and he looked at me, he said, this happened in my office. He goes, they don't mean the same world government as you. <laughs> yeah. and, in the, and then I'll have Media Matters call me up. Ring, ring, Media Matters. Uh, it's the editor of Media Matters. I go, oh, you're funded by George Soros. No, we're not, Alex. And I pull up the Federal Elections Commission stuff where they're funding it and uh, the uh, you know, different filings for nonprofits. I go, well, it says a million here, a million there. I mean, it shows he's the head guy. And they go, <laughs> I mean, they, here's my biggest frustration. These people operate in a world where they're just used to everyone not knowing the three branches of government, not knowing anything. And then they just say, there's no world government. They go, there's no world government. I read these police training manuals. They come in daily now. And it's like, if they talk about a world government run by banks, I'd actually see one that says, go ahead and bring them in. And chiefs, don't get mad if your guys bring them in because they're probably a terrorist. I mean, you, I, I mean, you can watch European C-SPAN, those different fees, it's all world government, mega banks taking over, but they're telling the cops, if somebody talks about this, go ahead and arrest them. They're probably a terrorist and they want to kill you. But see, it's having an opposite effect. As people wake up to the hoax, as the world wakes up to this fraud, it has the opposite effect because they're like, well, everybody's saying world government, but you say it doesn't exist. The minute the public loses their trust in this system, it's over. The system has gone so over the top that that's their weakness. And so the question is, is humanity scum? Is humanity weak? Will we, will we give in to this technological tyranny? Will we be conned by it? Or, or can we see through this elaborate giant hoax? Because it was Hitler that said, the bigger the lie, the better, the more they'll believe it. And so when something is so giant, so huge, and everyone around you who's a bunch of trendies who goes along with whatever's said because they're in the in-group, they're yes-men, they make being followers and yes-men cool. That's what trendiness is. When all the trendies are saying it must be that way, you've got to be the person that says no. But you can't do it in a timid way. 
You are literally fighting for free humanity and talking to someone who's in a zombie-like state. And so how you deal with them is your, your prerogative. I agree with Jim Mars that sometimes it's good not to preach but just to ask questions. But in my humble view, on average, it's best to hit somebody in the head with a two-by-four politically. <laughs> it is. No, I mean, it is because, because here, I'm spending my time trying to warn somebody about something. I mean, I'm talking to some yuppie or trendy who's, who's saying something to me. And they come up and make a joke when I'm in the grocery store, and I, I turn around and look at them. And they think their disdain has any effect on me except for me f having pity on them. So I guess it does have an effect. And they're laughing at me. And I just tell them, well, okay, I mean, if you really think things are going good and you really think the government doesn't lie to you and you really think everything's wonderful, I guess you're right. I guess everything is okay. And you've got a lot of power groveling to the system. And I turn away from them with my shopping cart. It's happened like 20 times. And they start going, no, no, I, I agree with you. It's a problem. Oh, oh, wait, you just wanted to feel powerful and make me feel like I was shunned for some little petty, petty power trip you're on. I'm way beyond that. I've done this with police many times when they're threatening to arrest me, protesting or whatever. And I just go, oh, you really like your kids growing up in this tyranny? You really like playing these games with me? Just go ahead and arrest me. Go ahead and beat my head in. Go ahead and shoot me in the back of your patrol car because you got all the power. But know this, I'm not selling out like you are. So go ahead and do it. And at that point, those groveling to the system lose all their power because I don't care anymore and I'm beyond all your games. I'm beyond your whole matrix, your whole system of bullshit. It's over. When I talk to you, when I meet you in person, I'm just like, my God, why am I the person even up here doing this? I mean, humanity has got so much strength. We've got all the cards in our hand if we just play them. That's all we got to do. Human destiny. We control our environment. Technocrats are engineering us. There's no other creature on this planet that can do one one thousandths of what we do. There are no creatures that can even begin to do anything. And let me tell you, I love elephants. I love whales. I love the raccoons that break into my garage and rob the refrigerator. I haven't set a camera up to watch him. <laughs> About 10 of them invaded my dad's house. He took photos of them sitting on the counter, sitting there eating apples. <laughs> but they're not designing rockets. They're not building computers. They're not making beautiful music. And again, just value who you are. So much of defeating the globalist. Everything they do is about making you think you're crap, making you think you're worthless, making you think you're petty so you need to buy into their system when every human being on this world is beautiful and is amazing and is a creature of unlimited potential but we are able to control our environment so an inbred group of psychopaths that i'll get to in a moment they they have they are creating a false environment like we're at the zoo or something that's how they see us Henry Kissinger writes books calling the military dumb animals. I mean, they constantly talk about how we're animals, we're scum, we're trash. That's how they always sell their abuse on different groups and people. And now across the board, we're dumb animals. We don't, we don't have a soul. They have a soul because they're illuminated and they deserve to go on and we deserve to die. No, we're just not twisted freaks like you that would figure out elaborate scams to, to, to cheat and hammer and screw everybody. It's you, the cancer, that is the aberrant problem. It's you that needs to be kicked off this planet. So we control our environment, just like this theater, this coliseum, this cathedral we're meeting in this, that was built in the 1930s, 80-something years ago. We control the environment. You individually, everything you stand for, is incredibly powerful. Don't ever forget how powerful you are. 
so the, 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 the social engineers have created this artificial system. It's not complete yet. People say, well, are they in total control, Alex? No, they're trying to get in control. They've got a lot of power. They're able to steer things. And we're in there trying to steer the ship away from despotism towards freedom. And that's the issue. There's nothing they can do against people power. There's nothing they can do when the individual is enlightened, when the individual is aware, when the individual is involved, when the individual realizes that every little thing they do adds together and that many hands make light work. That is what the global system is afraid of. So they are creating an artificial environment for us all. We should become aware of it. We should realize all electronics, all systems we're given on record. I've interviewed Dr. Stallman, all the big engineers are designed to control us. We're paying with the iPhones and all the rest of it for the back doors that they build into it. And I'm not saying, oh my God, don't use an iPhone because they control it or tracking us. Just realize you've got a powerful enemy weapon that's meant to be used against you and you better use it against them. Cause because a weapon, a weapon can be used by whoever's hands it's in. Realize this is powerful technology. This is Star Trek right here. And this wasn't given to us because they want us to, you know, buy their $200 phone made by slaves. This was given to us because it's meant to track and control us. But we're going to use this tool against them. And while we use the tool, we're going to talk about the Trojan horse built into it. You understand that? We're getting in the ring with the system. That's what we're doing. And we're aware of who we're in the, the ring with. Now, moving quicker here. Fighting tyranny is not work. It is destiny. It is fulfillment. Survival is winning. Wonderment is winning. Realizing how beautiful life is. Watching flowers grow outside your house or ants building a, 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 a ant bed or, or watching your children play. This is all incredible. And we're not going to get fulfillment from the globalist brainwashing corporate system. We're going to get fulfillment from what it is to be alive on a planet hurtling through space, orbiting the sun in the Milky Way galaxy. And with that, I got to give you a line from a Rush song. Put aside the alienation, get on with the fascination, the real relation, the underlying theme. Reality is what matters. Look, I can talk to millions of people, more than three million people a day, but there is so much more energy. It is so much more real to actually be here with you now. And I wanna talk about this. Here's Wired Magazine, the latest issue that Rob Jacobson bought and brought to me. Your next car will drive itself. And they've already said, and a whole bunch of states already have robot 18-wheelers and robot cars, and they're already saying, as I said they would do five years ago, the, the robot cars have less wrecks. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to drive. And the robot cars are watching you. And the robot cars know when you've been naughty. And I've got all these articles, how they're going to do it, just like all the drones. Oh, you think the military loves Ron Paul and is waking up? Yeah. We got like 10 years till everything's combat droids on the ground and AI, self-aware, autonomous kill drones. The New World Order is taking all your energy, all your work, all the science you develop, all the things you do, and building a Skynet. You know, Skynet predates the Terminator. The Terminator isn't, it isn't life imitating art, it's art imitating life. You can go pull up Pentagon documents about a sky grid Skynet from the 70s and all the drones they were going to have. And then I interviewed the former head of Star Wars program. He said by the late 70s, you were told it was launched in the 80s, they already had hundreds of drones in orbit with Sabo DU rounds that could decapitate every government on earth in one hour in the 1970s. That's where the national security state is. That's where your money went. 
That was almost 40 years ago. Why do you think they're so arrogant? But despite the fact that they have all that power, they're still scared of you for a good reason. If we can turn this around before they get their automated robot system in place, we've got a good chance of beating them. Once that robot system's in place, then it's time for God to step in. And just like Nineveh was given a 100-year reprieve, we can have that, but we have to stand up and do what's right, even if you don't believe in God. The point is, the New World Order believes in evil. So what do you believe in? You better ask yourself that question. The controllers know that we are not animals. They know that we are builders and creators, as I said earlier. And they are attempting to not just play God, but to become God. The problem is they're not God. And that's why everything they create, it now turns out it was 40 years ago they cloned rabbits and sheep, probably earlier with the Nazis, but admitted now. They were cloning humans 30 years ago. You can pull this up. They would, quote, kill them when they were in the embryonic phase. If you believe that, I got a bridge I'm gonna sell you. And everything they done has been a poisonous abomination. None of it works. Neutron bombs, hydrogen bombs, everything. I showed you a video earlier. This is on the national news. Oh, we fired several hundred high-powered hydrogen bombs into the atmosphere to see if we could ignite the planet's atmosphere. And they ask them, so it would burn the Earth up? Well, that was the test. And you're like, well, why'd you do that? It could kill us. Well, because we're scientists. Again, it's this power trip that they're on. The controllers know, again, that we're not animals. They all day try to teach us that we're animals, that we don't have free will, because they want us just to believe that we're these programmable creatures. They're attacking our free will. They're, they're buying and selling men's psyches, women's psyches. They are counterfeits to everything good and wholesome in life. They want our free will shut down, just like the John Carpenter film, They Live, We Sleep. Well, I'm ready for us to stop sleeping and to wake up. What about you? Are you awake or do you sleep? When you're awake, it doesn't mean you see what I see. You got your own two eyes. Are you awake? What do you see? Tyranny. Tyranny. You see a bunch of control freaks. My God, in my own life, I'm embarrassed of power because power is dangerous. Like the uncle of Spider-Man tells him, with great power comes great responsibility. But these wicked people, they're not ashamed of power. They're ready to use it. Now I'm going to get into solutions. Number one, the state is not God, and it cannot deliver you freedom or security. In every case in history, whether it was Katrina or whether it was what happened in World War II, the state cannot and will not protect you. The police will tell you they have no liability and no statutory responsibility to protect you. Does that not mean there aren't great cops everywhere that go out and shoot bad guys, arrest scumbags, stop people that are out of control? No. A lot of times they're good police that do a great job, but on average they respond 11 minutes after a 911 call. The state cannot and will not protect you. And the people at the top of this pyramid do not want to protect you. So remember that. The mommy state, anything it gives you is for a reason. Anything it does for you in the final equation has a larger meaning. There's a lot of examples I could give to that, but I'll use one right now that's just absolutely disgusting and painful to my soul as I think about all the children. And I'll just tell the story briefly here. But I've looked at the statistics. And it doesn't mean that the system they were getting rid of was good. No, 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 no. It's like you find somebody with a broken leg on the street and you say, you want me to fix that? And they say, yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna shoot you in the head. Well, how about you just fix my broken leg? 
In the 1950s, after World War II, all these black veterans were coming back who'd been in combat, and they said, listen, I'm not going to be bossed around anymore and told I'm your property and I'm a second-class citizen. And uh, I thought this was the side of the Civil War. And so the system said, all right, uh, the federal government will get involved and we'll come in and fix everything. And there's all these TV shows and all these movies and all these stories about how great it's been for black Americans with the system's so-called solution. But when you look at the numbers, 35, 40% illegitimacy, one-child families in 1952, 92% today. More than half of black males are even higher in statistics in prison with HIV or other issues. The family completely broken down, everything destroyed. The mothers paid not to have men in the house. The system totally broke down. And 50 one percent of all black babies since 1974 were cut up and killed and never born that's what this was all about and, and listen listen but here's the thing that was a beta test for everybody else that was a beta test and i'm starting to get into subjects like this but this is what we're talking about the system didn't come and try to right some previous wrong to try to empower people it did what it did to take control of a population. As Margaret Sanger said, we're going to pose as liberals so we can kill these black weeds. You can pull those quotes up. Universities have her letters. Oh, she's burning in hell now. Don't worry. The point is, the point is, as a non sequitur, MSNBC will call me up and they say, you believe in a new world order, does that mean you're a racist? I don't know. I'm not like a liberal fake scumbag like you who's out there promoting the killing of 51% of black people. I mean, listen, 74, 74 is the year I was born, 38 years ago. Half the black people. And let's say there's some racist here or tribalist or whatever, whatever. I get everybody's fighting with each other. I, I get it. I understand it. Everybody's been screwed by everybody. I understand it, okay? I understand from the black perspective, white perspective, Mexican, everything. I get it. I get it. The point is, I don't agree with it, but I get it. I know why people do this. The point is, are you going to sit there with 51% of the black kids and line them up and shoot them in the head yourself? Because if you're not going to sit there with little black children and shoot them right in the head yourself because, well... You know, they don't deserve to live. Boom! Then don't give me that bull. If you don't have the nerve to line those kids up and blow their heads off, I don't want to hear it. That's what I'm talking about. This is an anti-human agenda that's being done against us all, and it's got to come down. It's got to be defeated. It's got to be changed. Cancer's up by over 2,000% in the last 50 years. Diabetes by 3,000 plus percent. Neurological disorders, thousands of percent. Autism, 10,000%. The plague is everywhere. We're all being killed. We're all being attacked. We're all being aborted after we're born, and I'm sick of it, and it's time for the New World Order to back off. Because make no mistake, I don't have the words or the will to express to you how real this is. You're experiencing it, how real it is. And they start World War III, you're really going to see how real it is. Because these globalists are so ruthless, 9 out of 10 nuclear reactors are now openly leaking. And what does the EPA do? They raise the level of radioactive waste that's safe 100,000 times. You go look at the EPA's own website. These are crazy people. My God, I've almost gone crazy just watching them. God Almighty, when does this crazy land end? When does humanity wake up? When does humanity say no? When does humanity start stomping some globalist guts? Make no mistake. Make no mistake, humanity. The globalists are watching right now. I want to hear humanity's war grow. Ah! Ah! I don't care what you do to me. I'm coming on hard, you son of a bitch. Do 
we really want to turn our species over and everything we are and everything we're ever going to be to a bunch of inbred, psychopath, globalist trash? I consider it an honor to run up against their barbed wire. I consider it an honor to crush globalist scum. This war we face is run by a bunch of chicken neck, globalist, cowardly nerds who think we're weak and they've learned how to attack real men through sneaky means. Real men and women have to wake up to what they've done, get scientific, realize it, spread the word, and we're gonna kick their ass. You know, George W. Bush, after he staged 9-11 with his daddy, he said, you're either with us or with those Al-Qaeda terrorists they hired on record. Well, I got news for the New World Order. You're either with humanity or you're against us, and we're coming. I get moving here. There's only three pages left. <laughs> I gotta save some voice for the radio tomorrow. God, I just think about the, the, the chips. I think about the, the cost. I think about what we're up against. God almighty, if people knew what I knew. If people knew this wasn't a bunch of bull and had actually looked into it. I know you, a lot of you looked into it, but if you looked into it, this rabbit hole's so deep. <laughs> Things I've seen are so out of control. It's ridiculous that anybody would serve this system, that anybody could think that you're going to win serving this evil. The only thing you're going to do is destroy your family. There's not even a choice here fighting this new world order. There's not even a debate. There's not even a discussion once you've seen what I've seen. And I know a lot of you've seen it. A lot of you've seen things I hadn't seen. How the hell could we give ourselves over to this evil? How could we be part of this? All I know is it's a choice. And I'm saying... I'm not part of this, and I'm putting all in against this right now. Right now. Right now on the table. And that's what it is to be alive. You want to be alive? You're not going to find it in some Armani suit. You're not going to find it in a mansion or some bling. You're going to find truth defending the innocent against evil. That's the only place you're gonna find it. I've put my name, my children, my wife, my treasure on the line, and I am committed. And when you're committed, there's nothing that can stop you. Can you imagine the awakening that's going to happen if they release those bioweapons? After we've warned people so much, God Almighty, I hope the next phases of what we've broken down don't happen. God Almighty, I hope they don't. But I know one thing, I'm sure selfish, I've sure gotten my family ready. What are the solutions? Well, first off, it's to wake up. And I've already talked about what that means. That's different for every person out there. But to wake up is to tune into something powerful. Know that the reason many people tune into reality and tune right out is because they can't handle it. The question is, can you handle it? Wake others up once you're awake. That is the key. Realize that you are the most important of missions. You are on an incredible mission, alive in an amazing time, in a struggle against death and life. I had good and evil here, but that's not right. It's death and life. The New World Order. I used to read the Bible as a child. I didn't understand it. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's all it wants. That's all it's here to do is destroy this planet. And it's a great contest that we're involved in. And the system tells us it doesn't matter what we do. It's all preordained. But that's a lie. Because if you really know the history and the world, we are deciding what we do, what we stand for, brings in God's providence. I already talked about this earlier. The devil's greatest trick is convincing the world he doesn't exist. 
Again, I'll say this to you now. If you're an atheist, if you're whatever you are, the point is the elite, I've studied them, they believe in a devil. They believe in Lucifer. They worship a Lucifer. And whether it's real or not, they're manifesting it at Skull and Bones and Bohemian Grove and all the rest of it. They revel in hurting innocents. They revel in hurting children. Everything they stand for is the opposite of what we stand for. Think about that. Look at history before you deny or scoff. Because those that ignore history are fools, and they will repeat it. I seek to not repeat history. I seek a reprieve. Realize that you're on the most important mission of missions, and that you represent the survival of humanity and the struggle of good versus evil. An infinity of activism. Everything you do, you won't hear it back at least the first day of the first year. But you, it, it will come back to you. The question is, do you realize it? It's like a rock in a pond. What is that activism doing? What does that activism say? What is it going to create in the larger destiny? That's the question. And again, it's that right purpose. It's that commitment. It's not that you even think you're going to save the world by your actions. It's that the spirit of liberty and freedom and truth and justice and that you do the right thing because you're compelled to do it. And that's an unstoppable order in the world. That's a transmission. That's a coded message. That's a command. It's a demand. It is calling down the power of the creator of the universe. And nothing can stop that. And you're not going to find it in these 501c3 sold out New World Order churches. You're going to find it. You're going to find it facing evil. Recognize false paradigms and help others recognize them. And there's just countless false paradigms. And no one's pure, so everything's false to a certain extent. But there is all these false systems of thought and dichotomies, but they're always about playing groups off against each other. They're always about division. They're always about infighting. They're always seeking to divide the people. And you can recognize them once you're awake. Once you have discernment, you will recognize them. Map the artificial habitat proto-matrix grid. And a proto-matrix is a matrix that's not complete yet. The Matrix movie, as I said with Terminator, was actually written about again in the 70s. You can pull this up. It's in my book, Descent into Tyranny, online. It's free online everywhere. Where the Pentagon talked about all the things you basically see in the Matrix as their own crazy vision of how we're all plugged into machines. Incrementally, we're being programmed towards interfacing with the machines into buying into the false reality, buying into the robot cars, the robot houses, the robot helicopters, the robot drones, a system where we're displaced from everything and these big automated systems run everything so that we don't have a choice, so we don't live on the land, so we're not independent. And all the government documents and all the government training is attacking those Amish and those farmers and those separatists and those people that want to be left alone and grow their own food. They got to be watched. They're dangerous because it wants to force you into its system where it controls you. Realize that it's happening. It's part of this dependence control grid that we're facing. Don't underestimate the enemy's twisted designs. If you can think of it, they're doing it. <laughs> I've played this game at the office. We can come up with the most wild thing you can imagine. The government's doing it. Just type it into a search. Engine. Oh, they're doing it. Oh, they've been doing it 20 years. It is mind-blowing to see this going on. It is mind-blowing to see this happening. But don't underestimate your power and the power of action. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. Last night I'm driving up here, and we wanted to get some bottled water, so we... We pull in to a C CVS pharmacy, partway to Dallas. And I'll walk in, and there's like giant take your flu shot signs, and there's uh, fluoride water for babies everywhere. So I, I shoot like a two-minute video, and like a third of the comments were, I can't believe he wasn't thrown out. I can't believe... Uh, he got away with this. And I'm like, I had to wait 10 minutes for one cashier to show up 
these are all corporate robot drone systems shutting down our economy by design to make us dependent. There was no one there. So what did they Hey, I'm shopping here. I want to show you're selling mercury-filled shots to people and fluoride on record that gives kids brain cancer and bone cancer. I mean, so what? But, but what's amazing about this is, is that people didn't believe I did it. Like, it was so bold. He, he walked in for two minutes and showed somebody something. That's, that's that guy's, a, he, it's got to be fake. Uh, uh, I mean, who are these people that they think to turn up, I mean, literally, I'm walking along to get some bottled water, and I'm like, it's all got fluoride in it for babies. And I'm just going, oh, we got this going on here. Yeah. And, and, and people think it's fake. So don't underestimate the enemy's twisted designs, but don't est underestimate your own power. I mean, looking at this, I sneak into Bohemian Grove. People can't believe I actually did it. <laughs> no, but, but there are hundreds of examples of, of stuff I've done, and I'm nobody. Any of you could do similar things, as long as you're mission-oriented and like a, hell, my dogs can go out and catch rabbits or squirrels all day and kill them, not because they're superheroes, they just go out and do it. I mean, it's not hard, but, but, but my point is, is that, is that I just went through, I BS the Secret Service, I got the footage, I got out. People are like, it's impossible. No one can get in there. No one can do that. And then I stormed the Texas Capitol. I was ready to be arrested. I stormed in. Hey, you're going to let the TSA grope everybody after you unanimously voted to do it? And people said, people said, they said, it must be fake. No one could do something like that. Well, I bet there's people in this audience who stormed the Capitol with me, not once but twice, right over here. What, are you a government agent, part of a Hollywood film? You mean, oh, yes, he is. He says he is. The point is, is that hundreds of times I have done things that were easy to do, and everybody's like, that couldn't be real. Why, he couldn't, couldn't possibly do that. And that's this idea that you're little. You don't have power. You can't get stuff done. It's ridiculous. I never intended 17 years ago getting an access television show in Austin, Texas. I never intended to now, 17 years later, conservatively be reaching 15 million people every week. I, I mean, I never even... But, but listen, I'm just an average guy from Dallas, Texas, who woke up to the New World Order. I mean, l listen, again, I am nothing special. I'm just an average person. You attack me, I'm going to attack right back. It is, it is such a simple equation. I've simply stood up 17 years ago, and I've seen devastating effects on the globalist. I've had victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. After victory. But I will tell you the key ingredients, hard work, research, doggedness, and fearlessness. Because once you commit to something, that's just the way it is. And that's nothing special. That's a human trait that I share with my ancestors and that you share with your ancestors. And the globalist, the globalist cannot th take that away from you. Here are some of the points. Bohemian Grove, people didn't believe that was real, even though they admit it and were threatening me. Uh, I've called the FBI on air. I've called the White House. I've called Homeland Security. Uh, yeah, uh, I've interviewed witnesses. The underwear bomber was put on the plane by the U.S. government months before it came out. And they're like, uh, we're not going to take that report. Click. And listeners see this on the air and on TV, and they go, that couldn't be real. He wouldn't call the FBI. That's Jack Bauer. They'd come cut his, cut his body parts off. You know, that, that's fake. Bohemian Grove, calling the FBI. They didn't believe the CVS was real. That's not like it's courage. Like, oh, I videotaped something. My God, it can't be real. He actually videotaped it in a store. Like, I care what some store clerks say. Like, if a store clerk comes around the corner, uh, sir, you're not allowed to videotape it here. Oh, God, my life's so much. <laughs> I mean, 
Oh, really? This is really getting to me right now. <laughs> now, if somebody calls up and threatens to kill your family, that does have an effect. You just double down. The point is, is that the average person is so disempowered, and it's sad. Ken, you got power. Use it. Stand up. You're only alive once. You only got red blood pumping through your veins. We all got red blood. You only got it one time, folks. That's it. It's all a test. And at the end of my life, I can say, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've had a lot of problems. But you know what? I didn't cower to a bunch of scum, and I stood up to them. And that's what matters. We're told these lies that you can't fight City Hall. Every time I see people actually get together and keep fighting City Hall, if they've got justice on their side, if they're right, if the system's wrong, they may lose two, three, four times, but everybody I've ever seen who keeps going and going and going and going and saying, I don't care whether I win or lose, I'm gonna keep on a coming. Nobody can stand up against that. In fact, it was the founder of the Texas Rangers that said, I'm going to probably butcher this from memory, but a man in the wrong can't win against a man in the right who keeps on a coming. It is that commitment to keep on a coming that is going to defeat the globalist. Continuing with successes. We can fight City Hall. We are fighting City Hall. Look at We Are Change. A 19-year-old kid, part of New York 9-11 Truth, Luke Radowski gets kicked out of 9-11 Truth because his foundation funded in New York. He's getting into the New World Order. He's getting into how America's controlled by these banking interests. He's, he's not just blaming America like the globalists wanted him to. He's actually realizing there's a group above America using us as their power slave, and they tell him, you're out of the group. Then I get calls. I get invited to join. Oh, these people want to meet with you and all these fancy rich people. No, I don't want to meet with you either. So I call Luke up, and I say, well, they don't want me to talk to you. I better get you on. And I get this one 19-year-old one kid from New York. There's now like 400-plus groups all over the world. We are change, real change, fighting the globalists. Another example of what action does. The universe responds to it. The universe responds to commitment and honor and sacrifice. And that's one of the biggest solutions here, and I'm going to get to it right now. Look at Ron Paul. In the space of four years, he's more than doubled in all these states the amount of votes he's getting. He's winning almost all the stroll polls, the debates, being short shift on the time on the debates, being attacked, everything, and now it's all over the news, Washington Post, you name it. Oh, he really did win Maine. Oh, there was, they are throwing the election out in Iowa, but we're not gonna say why. Uh, the same thing in Nevada. They, they, look, Ron Paul, look, you see a hundred Ron Paul stickers. Well, I've never seen a Mitt Romney sticker. I, have you? Have you? I've been all over the country. Have you ever seen a Newt Gingrich sticker? No, no. You've not seen a Santorum sticker? And they can steal these elections, but they cannot steal the fact that it changes month to month. He gets between 71 and 75% of all military donations. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that scares the hell out of the New World Order? I mean, they're like, get the drones in the air and the robots on the ground as fast as possible. And I get all the DHS memos, the police and military send them to me. It's all, the veterans are terrorists, get ready to kill them. I mean, it's just like, remember when, four years ago when I got those documents and I believed them? Where it's like, the returning veterans are the number one threat. And, Ron Paul's supporters are number two, and uh, there's an anti-tax movie by Aaron Russo that's number three. Uh, these people don't like the Federal Reserve, which we all know is government. They actually told the cops that, and then the cops go look it up and find out it's private. See, the lying runs out at a certain point, and I can't tell you how many military people, brass, you name it, talk to me on and off air, and they tell me, oh, about 80% of my command's awake, 70%, rarely it's below 50. 
And I mean, they're waking up fast. They're waking up fast. They're waking up fast. And the globalists, the globalists, they want to get us into a new war because they know Americans, once we're in a war, will kind of, well, I don't trust the government, but we're in a war. You know, I better do what I'm told. The point is that trick only works so far. The fact that we've gone from Ron Paul 15 years ago, 16 years ago when I was first interviewing him, getting no co-sponsors to audit the private Federal Reserve, to passing it in the House, and the Senate had to kill it procedurally. You're like, well, they still killed it. Oh, yeah, he's about to get the votes again. The point is we've gone from nothing to passing it. The point is, okay, they're cheating Ron Paul. We show everybody how they cheat him. And he goes around and educates people. Resistance is victory. Every time we decide to stand up to these bullies, we get stronger each and every time. Don't you see it? More solutions. 15 years ago, 13 years ago, you couldn't find organic food on a store shelf. Now, even at mainline grocery stores, half of it's organic, or at least they say it is. The point is we're winning, voting with our dollars. That's a blueprint to defeat the New World Order. Did I mention all of this is the fact that we have the power, we've got the energy, we're the people, we're the mass, we're humanity, and these globalists that think they're God are a bunch of malfunctioning, aberrant psychopaths. The in the Fed movement's exploding. The organic movement's exploding. Suddenly, every grocery store I go to, two years ago, it was like the trendy places. Now it's regular grocery stores. Oh, we don't have BPA in our plastic baggies that sterilize you, give you cancer, women breast cancer, men prostate cancer. Oh, we don't have BPA. We don't have fluoride. We don't have, oh, God, we're not any part of that. Don't, don't, don't buy our stuff. See, you take action, nothing can, st that's why. If you look at three years ago when it came out, the swine flu doubled your chances, the, the vaccine, doubled your chances if you took the vaccine of getting the flu the next year, had all these health problems, didn't protect you from swine flu, which was non-existent, uh, the, you know, the H1N1, all this garbage. As soon as all that happened, suddenly everywhere you go, it's flyers. People come into your office, we'll bring a chocolate cake and shots. They're free. <laughs> Oh, a big mega corporation like Bayer Pharmaceutical that worked with the Nazis caught for 10 years shipping out tainted blood to hemophiliacs a few years ago, and, 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 and Merck and all you, you got a free cake? And, 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 and then they call them, look this up, I'm not lying, a vaccine party. <laughs> and we knew right then, it turns out that stuff was a simulant virus they released that's some type of trigger and is carrying a whole nother virus. You can look this up. I mean, they'd sue me if it wasn't true. You can look it up right now. There's a whole carrier virus. They said, oh, it's contaminated. It just came out a few months ago. There is an extra virus in there. Don't, don't look at it. Don't, don't look at it under an electron microscope. Uh, just enjoy what's about to happen to you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is beyond wild. It, it, it's, it's just like they're, they're already killing all these people around us. They're dying. They're dropping dead left and right. Okay. I mean, again, I'm not scared of you. I'm, I'm free. I'm free now. And, and I'm free. I'm free. You got that? I'm free. I'm free of you. I'm free of fear. I'm free of it all. I'm not going to watch you sit there and kill people all day any long. You want to kill me? Go ahead. All I know is in the end of the day, you're going down. Yeah. Continuing here, states' rights is exploding nullification of out-of-control globalist edicts through our federal government are exploding. Cities from the one in Tampa with a million people to Calgary up in Canada to all over are removing fluoride. And, oh yeah, oh yeah. They have the scientists come in and go, seven-fold increase in bone cancer, brain damage, here's all the documents. And they go, okay, you're right, we're gonna take it out. And people are like, well, Alex, even though you're having some successes, uh, the states in New Jersey and Arkansas are just passing laws to forcibly fluoridate the water. And they're like, see, you failed. The feds came in and got them. I'm like, I failed. We pointed out it's not the law and made them respond counterattacking. I'm in the fight. I'm not failing. I'm not just laying here and taking somebody attacking me. And you think I've 
just begun to fight. I haven't even gotten started. Look, they can't kill this message. They've learned that. You're there. You are the future. You are the leaders. You are the resistance. That's not just something here for a crowd to make you feel good. I mean it right here in my heart. You are the resistance. You are the future. Your children are the future. You are what's standing between us and the eugenicist death cult of the New World Order. You understand that? You realize that responsibility? What are you going to do? Let me hear your war girl. Because let me tell you something. This is the hiatus. This is the honeymoon. This is the calm before the storm. All this tyranny you've seen, all this craziness getting out in the open, that's the enemy uncloaking to line up their forces. The only reason you can see them now is because they're massing. They're lining up. Let me tell you. But the good thing is once they fully attack, the gloves are off. It's all out in the open. You think we've seen an awakening right now? doesn't matter whether I make it through this or not or whether you do individually. The message has been sent. The horn has been blown. The warning has been issued. I will tell you again. You are the Paul Revere's of the 21st century, and on your decision to take action rests the future of this species. Yeah. All right, in conclusion, then they've got some microphones over here, and I'll take some questions. And there's a lot of other solutions I didn't get to. You know, homeschooling's exploding everywhere. It's not just for the Amish anymore. <laughs> States' rights. Police and military are waking up everywhere, as I said, and refusing to do gun confiscation drills in places like Arcadia, Iowa. All of this is going on. But I want to give you a quote. George Washington gave one like it. Thomas Jefferson gave one. They're all similar. But all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish, grow like big trees, flourish. All that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men do nothing. Nothing. You could just do something and stop these people. They're scared of you. I cannot express that hard enough. And finally for solutions... Constructive criticism is given in a friendly way, in a loving way. And constructive criticism is good, and I take it from everyone. But it's generally done privately, or it's done with, we're doing great work, but I think this is a better idea, or what do you think of this? When you see people operating as patriots, and you see them operate and then start attacking others savagely while not attacking the greater evil, you can be assured that by contract or by spirit, unconsciously, they are serving the globalist. I already knew this years ago, COINTELPRO, you name it. But Cass Sunstein, three years ago, the White House regulations are said, we will pose as conspiracy theorists, those that question known liars, that's the definition of that. If you question known confirmed liars, you're a conspiracy theorist. Think for yourself, read government documents, you're a conspiracy theorist. We will infiltrate their ranks and we will attack them. We will, we will cause infighting. We will put out fake theories. We will do all of this. And you need to understand that infighting is the globalist tool. They intend, and, and let's say you totally disagree with somebody about something. The point is, do they have the power to tax, the power to destroy? Are they pushing vaccines on you? Are they the system? Are they the man? Because let me tell you something. We can all kill each other later if we want after we've dealt with David Rockefeller and Bill Gates and all these. Listen, listen, listen. I could call them Nazis, but everybody uses that term. These are not Nazis. This is the creature. This is the creature that gave birth to the Nazis. This is the creature that gave birth to the communists. When you study the New World Order, the mega banks out of England, they are the ones on record who funded all the authoritarian movements. And, and, and Carol Quigley, 
at Georgetown, Bill Clinton's mentor, wrote a 900-page book admitting this. And what's crazy is I don't just believe his book. I've separately looked at all the documents. He's writing a book, only 1,000 copies for the State Department, so that their own CIA section chiefs and others could understand this. they got to write a book like, here's how the evil works. We fund the fascist, the communist, we fund it all. Here it is. These people are like, and of course one leaked out, quickly admitted it was his. They fund it all. They're just, they're hyper dominant. You ever run into somebody who's really dominant, just absolutely has to be in control of everything? Well, imagine these people like 10 times that. And if they can get the power, they're going to do it. If they can dominate you, they're going to do it. And listen, they're like any other bully or some guy that thinks he's the king of the hill. He's just going to have to get his butt stomped. Okay? And, I mean, that's what it comes down to. All right, continuing here. We are at the crossroads of human destiny. The universe lays before us. The eye has not seen, the ear has not heard what God's got in store for us. The psychopath guild known and knows that humanity is awakening and has used our energy, our skills, to construct a global, chemical, biological, electronic, spiritual concentration camp. But our spiritual discernment and our ancestral genetics has sensed the threat, and for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and you are that shield of humanity. In closing, they are coming for us, and we are facing them down and coming for them. The globalists are girded for war against us, as I mentioned earlier. Spy satellites are now watching farmers. Artificial intelligent weaponized autonomous drones are in our skies. Biometric cameras scan our faces, our cars. Soon to buy and sell, they admit, we'll have to scan. They can add fines and fees and taxes to that, and Homeland Security has said, as I told you, TSA would come to Dallas, they're now on the streets. You will face scan to buy and sell. Whether you're a Christian or not, it's here. Ambient, soft kill, full spectrum weapons are already being used. The chemicals, the biologicals, the radiologicals, the GMO. Anti-family dependency as they destroy our families and turn us against each other and wreck our society. And all the pollution and curses that come from it, the crime, everything, then they pose as the saviors after they've wrecked our society. Agenda 21 siege, the oldest form of war is, is siege. And that's what Agenda 21 was set up for. It's what it was designed for, was to shut down our society, shut down our infrastructure, shut down our systems through taxes and regulations, so we're dependent on them. Realize that they are against us. They are engaged in slave disarmament, as they call it, the attempt to disarm the people, but that's failing. Giant wars of death and destruction to demonize America's name while they build their new world order. They get all the power and control. We get the blame and pay for it. A spy society co-opting the youth, telling them to spy on their parents, the preacher spying on their flock, classic police state checkpoints on the highways, a national security state operating in secret, and even when it gets caught shipping in drugs or guns to Mexico, they don't get in trouble. I close with Ron Paul and a quote from his book, In the Fed. It is no coincidence that the century of total war coincided with the century of central banking. Ron Paul, in the Fed. I'm going to say that again. It is no coincidence that the century of total war coincided with the century of central banking. Ron Paul. Americans come from diverse backgrounds, but everyone came here through adversity. We're a strong, vibrant, but also warlike country. And it's easy for us to have an enemy dangled in front of us and we charge off to destroy them. Let's not be mindless beast of war for the globalists to destroy countries they want to take over. Let's become conscious of this and realize the real enemy has taken over our nation, as Cicero said, not with a banner openly against our walls, but from within as the traitor, as the plague. We must cut off the enemy's blood supply. We must outlaw fractional reserve banking, the true power of the money changer.
It is only by ending derivatives, fractional reserve banking, the Federal Reserve, where these rich families issue zeros and ones, we go into debt to them out of nothing. That is the root, the heart of the new world order. The love of money, I wouldn't say, is the root of all evil. It is to a certain extent. But it's the creation of money that is the root of evil's control. And that's what we face. So I have given you here what I believe, and from my research, what I have seen is the clearest path towards resisting the globalist. And certainly you can add upon this. It doesn't mean I have all the answers or know the best ways to deal with all of this. But I have fought hard against these people, and I've studied them deeply and committed my entire intellect and being and psyche and will and spirit to this fight. And I know that they can be defeated. I know that they will be defeated if you, humanity, makes the decision to stand against them. But I've done what I can do. The ball is in your court. You will decide the destiny. When we act, God will provide the providence, but it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to resist these guys or play along with it for a while and hope that you're not affected. The choice is up to you. I want to thank everybody here in Dallas for coming out and people driving. People driving from Arkansas and Louisiana and New Mexico. I salute you. God bless you. You're awesome. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information.